Dear learners, welcome to NIOS. Today, I am going to teach you about the Guptas, the golden age of Gupta period and Gupta art. In Gupta period, we witness the blossoming out of aesthetic consciousness in which the established tradition of Indian arts finds its most supreme expressions. This period, AD 319 to 510, has been described as the golden age of Indian art. Gupta India should definitely be considered an empire. It was a massive empire, including entire northern India, almost up to Japan. Gupta government spanned the entire empire with the individual local states we are willing enough to cooperate with the central government. There was high agricultural potential in Gupta, India. When Chandragupta took over the failing Mauryan Empire, he immediately made efforts to fix the economy. Gupta Empire was established by Sri Gupta, Chandragupta I, Samudragupta, and Chandragupta II were very eminent and prominent leaders and emperors of Gupta period. The Guptas with their wealth and power provided an atmosphere for a brilliant growth of Indian genius in all fields of human activity, be it construction, literature, art, which attained the most limits of refinement. The Gupta period may be described as classic because of the degree of perfection never achieved before or since and in perfect balance and harmony with stylistic and iconographic elements. This period also witnessed a reorientation of spiritual outlook with Puranic Hinduism and its main three deities coming to forefront. For example, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Though the Guptas by religion were Brahmanical with the special preference with worship of Vishnu, they showed exemplary tolerance with Jainism and Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism was so much affected by the birth of new thoughts and ideologies that it slowly started passing through a process of intellectual absorption into Hinduism leading to assimilation of Buddha into medieval Hindu pantheon as an incarnation of Buddha Vishnu. It was under the same intellectual influence that a reshaping of plastic ideologies came into being. In sculptural composition of Gupta period, the human figures acquire a new significance. The human body is no more a means of expression by itself, but now a medium for the exploration of the form of movement of life. With new importance given to human body, vegetative motifs recede into the background. They either disappear altogether from the composition, are relegated to borders, but the glide guiding movement characteristic of vegetation clings to the permeates human forms now entirely modeled in eternal rhythm. It has always been the attempt of Indian artists to symbolize their concept of a god or a superman by a highly evolved imagery. This feature was present in the early Buddhist era and was seen in experimental state of Mathura and Amaravati. Under the Gupta civilization, in order to ensure the divine ideality of a conception, canons of proportion and appearance of figures as well as their attributes were formulated. An elaborate system of symbolic gestures, attitudes, weapons, instruments and attendant figures were further developed for determining the character and quality of various gods. The four faces of Brahma represent 
the four Vedas. His arms represented the four major quarters. The four faces of Vishnu stands for knowledge, strength, sovereignty and power. The five faces of Shiva symbolizes five gross elements like earth, water, wind, fire and sky. The water vessel in the hands of Brahma stand for primeval waters from which spring all the beings. The rosary in another hand indicates eternal time. The discus and mace in the two hands of Vishnu symbolize solar energy which destroy all evil force. The conch in the third hand stands for creative force and the lotus in the fourth for the universe. The club in the hands of Bhairava symbolize death. The mirror and lotus sign of Uma symbolize pure knowledge and renunciation. The skin garment of Brahma symbolize sacrifice whereas the spotted tiger skin worn by Shiva stand for desire. The long garland hanging in the neck of Vishnu is for binding the whole universe. The snake around Shiva's neck is for divine anger. The de deities are always shown as riding their particular vahanas. For example, the Garura Vahana of Vishnu is the symbolic of the mind present in all rational beings. The bull of Shiva typifies strength. The trigress of Kali is suggestive of destruction and fury. In case of standing images, the postures are called bhangas. These are samabhanga. There were four types of bhangas. The main samabhanga, abhanga, tribhanga and atibhanga. The art depending so much for its expression on spiritual ideas could not have much use for jewellery and garment. But the little that is tolerated reveal further the inner in outer forms. The face was given an oval shape. The forehead and eyebrows followed the curve of the bow. Eyes were drawn in imitation of eyes of a deer or fish or lotus petal. The lip like the bimba fruit. The neck was imitation of neck of goose. Thighs resembled elephant's trunk. The arms like lotus stalk. Fingers like champak flower. The various body parts thus borrowed from nature were coordinated in the most naturalistic manner. Elegant and sensitive. Appear to glow with supreme sense of flow of life. Thus was born a new spirit of Indian art movement which was followed for thousand years even after the Guptas in India and greatly influenced the art movements of the neighboring lands even outside India. The Buddha images are amongst the most notable creation of this period. The earlier figures which develop physically now attain a character which reflects the achievement of supreme bliss. The face is relaxed and luminous body shines with a spiritual ecstasy. The statue have been discovered from Mathura which continue to be the flourishing center of Buddhism. One of the earliest is the 5th century figure of Buddha which although retaining heavy solidarity and volume differs from Kushana prototypes. Another active center of Buddhist culture was Sarnath. The Sarnath records the greatest advance of this new aesthetic ideal. One of the greatest creation of Gupta sculpture is the high relief statue of Buddha found in ruins of Sarnath. Carved from light sandstone, it represents Buddha 
giving his first sermon while below the pedestal two groups of monks are seen worshipping the veil of law. The expression of inner serenity and outer compassion and the divinely lit smile are executed with mastery of skill in the Saranath Buddha. Saranath Buddha is one of the most eminent and famous sculptures of the world with such mastery and skill that it can be regarded as the greatest achievement of Indian art. Mathura and Sarnath jointly typify the Gupta classical tradition. Aesthetically impressive as the stone figures are the metal sculptures of this period. The colossal bronze statue of standing Buddha from Sultan Gaj in a gesture conveying fearlessness recalls the Sarnath finish in the smoothly rounded attenuation of body and limbs which shine out through the transparent drapery. Now we will come to the Gupta Empire paintings. Paintings in Gupta period have been testaments of artistic excellence and prevail during the ancient era that is 320 CE to 550 CE. The period is called the Golden Age of India. Painting as an art reached its perfection in Gupta period. These paintings are to be found in Bagh caves in Madhya Pradesh, Bidisa caves and in Ajanta caves in Maharashtra. The school which these paintings represent was the source from which half of the art of Asia drew its inspiration. These paintings are characterized by instinctive beauty of line, majestic graceful figures, decorative imagery and dramatic expressiveness. The refined art of Ajanta is clearly the culmination of 100 years of cultivation and practice. Uh, now we will come to the characteristic of Gupta paintings. The Gupta art had religious and spiritual appeal. The artists were Shilpa Yogins. They were monks who had dedicated their lives to higher things of life and gave their best in chiseling the scenes in their various paintings. There is a great simplicity of style and felicity of expression in the Gupta paintings, in the Ajanta paintings. The technique and the subject were blended harmoniously. The art of Gupta period reveals certain chief characteristics. It is marked by refinement and restraint, signs of highly developed cultural taste and aesthetic enjoyment, balance, freedom and elegance are properly combined. There is worship of beauty but not at the cost of good taste. That is a very typical characteristic of Gupta painting. Beauty was the expression of nobility of the soul within and could not be sullied by notions or feelings of sheer sensuousness. Ajanta paintings now in Maharashtra lies in the western ghats which marks the boundary of Deccan land separating it from that of Khandesh along the valley of river Tapti. An outstanding feature of Ajanta art is that it combines architecture, sculpture and painting in its variety of expression. They are blended into marvelous unity of conception. The selection of the site shows good taste. The situation is romantic and full of natural scenery. The mural paintings are among the best of Ajanta art. A painting of the mother and child before Lord Buddha is a great example. There is religious feeling of adoration in it. The artists have poured out their souls in color and there is supernatural grace. 
even ordinary events are wrapped with mystic significance in Ajanta caves. Another painting is seen near the Nagaraja is seated uh, seen where the Nagaraja is seated with his queen. Both of them are in a mood of contemplation and are deeply absorbed in what they are hearing. There are innumerable figures of Buddha that suggest the enthusiasm of the artist's devotion. Padmapani, Vajrapani, they are famous paintings of Ajanta. The Ajanta tradition furnished a basis for new creations both in India and other countries too. The frescoes at Sigiriya in Ceylon, the paintings at Bagh in Gwalior district, frescoes in temple of Sitan Vatsal in Tamil Nadu and many more can be cited as examples. Gupta India should definitely be considered an empire. Gupta government span the entire empire and the individual local states were willing enough to cooperate with the central government. There was high agriculture potential in Gupta India. Trade routes were constructed and taxes were established to benefit India as a whole. The military of Gupta India was a great one. The citizens remained secure and protected. Gupta leaders used powerful persuasion rather than vicious battles to add new territories to their already powerful empire. The theatre state was a prime example of healthy relationship between rulers and citizens in Gupta, India. The government collected goods and other means from the citizens and eventually returned them to the citizens in form of gifts. The fall of Gupta empire was not due to intellectual fault but rather to the violent and irresistible invasion of the Huns. We truly believe that Gupta India earned the title of a great empire. Dear learners, I hope you have benefited and understood this lesson. Thank you.